Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa sayyiati a'malina. Man yahdihillahu fala mudilla la wa man yudlil fala hadiya la. Asyhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la syarika la wa asyhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. <coughs> Usikum wa iya ya awalan bitaqullah Faqad fazal muttaqun Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh <coughs> Allahumma bika asbahna wa bika amsayna Wa bika nahya wa bika namut Wa ilayka nushur Bismillahi alladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم رضيت بالله ربا بالإسلام دينا وبمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نبيا اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك وعلى طاعتك اللهم أدقلنا جنتك وجرنا من النار اللهم ادخلنا جنتك وجرنا من النار اللهم ادخلنا جنتك وجرنا من النار ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين To all the brothers and sisters alhamdulillah with the will of Allah سبحانه وتعالى Firstly القديم first Fun run been organized yesterday, and Alhamdulillah, we have more than three thousand participants, from young, old, family, male, female. Alhamdulillah, it's a great blessing that we can do all these activities from time to time, and we have fun while we are running. We have, we are happy, we enjoy the environment. We sweat for the right cause. We get tired for the right reason. At the same time, we get to know one another and try to strengthen the Muslim family hoods among ourselves. And we do have some who are not yet Muslim as fellow Malaysian or maybe foreigners who join. May Allah Almighty give them hidayah when we Muslims set good example, show them that we care and we do yeah, like to share with them all the good things. <coughs> Alhamdulillah, we managed to run, we still have fun. If we reflect back to what happened in Gaza, people are running for their life and they keep on running and running. Not for fun, for survival. <coughs> there is a difference. When you have peace, you can do a lot of things. When there is no more peace, it's a matter of survival. May Allah Almighty grant peace to those who love peace. And may Allah Destroy those who love to destroy Allah's creation. I mean, brothers and sisters, we always remember the importance of remembering Allah, seeking His blessing, His mercy, His forgiveness, day and night, while we are still able to ask Allah for blessing. We should keep on asking, never give up. And we always hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us well prepared before we return back to Allah. Amin. It's so important to make sure our intention is purely for Allah. We focus on building the right iman and be istiqamah, be consistent. 
And we ask Allah for protection because He knows about the danger around us that may come down from the sky and the surface from the land. Only Allah knows everything. So we humble ourselves seeking Allah's protection. And then we keep on asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us people who are always ready to serve Him, ready to be lahi rabba. Meaning anything Allah wants us to do, we are ready. We don't give excuses because Allah knows our excuses is just an excuse. It's not true. Anything for dunya, for ourselves, we are ready to do it. Anything for Allah, we give a lot of excuses. I'm tired. I'm not ready. Whether you are tired, you are not ready, you have to discipline yourself. Make sure that we are always ready. Inshallah. And then we keep on asking Allah, thanking Him because Allah has given us a, a very divine, complete way of life. That is Islam. Show us the way. Whoever follow this way will never turn astray. Whoever choose not to follow, no one that they can blame except themselves. Then we say to Allah, we are so proud, so happy, so pleased that we was chosen by Allah to be the followers of Prophet Muhammad the last messenger. Where we will be appointed by Allah as a witnesses in the day of judgment to everyone around us. And we were granted as Khairu Ummah, the best nation, Alhamdulillah. So we have to show the best. That's why we eat the best food, drink the best drink that do not cause harm to ourselves. And make sure that an, our environment is a good environment. Then we ask Allah, oh Allah, bless us with good knowledge. To have good knowledge, you may have good friends, good environment. Sometimes we are good, but if you are not careful with your environment, the environment slowly will come and corrupt you and make you feel so bad. And sometimes if you can still be bad, it's good. That means you are aware and you have to move out. You have to make a small sacrifice. You must make migration. That is very important. Without this intention of migration, hijrah, Meaning, we allow ourselves, we allow ourselves to be destroyed. You know? This is called self-destruction. So we keep on asking Allah Rabbul Alameen for His special mercy, His guidance, so that Allah Rabbul Alameen, the Creator, the All-Knowing, the All-Seeing, will always yeah, protect us. Who knows who is a good friend? No one knows except Allah. What is in the heart of anybody, no one knows. Friend is friend. Even when it comes to family members, there's a lot of tests and trial and challenges. We also remember the importance of Allah's command to eat what is good for us. Because our body is an amana, it's very important to make sure that we take care of ourselves. The minimum, the minimum that you can take care of yourself is your food and your drink. If you are healthy, you'll be more happier. If you are not healthy, you know that you are not being kind to yourself. And the Prophet said, Wali nafsika alayka haqq. Remember, your life, your body have right upon you. In the day of judgment, our body bear witness against us. 
our eye, our hand, you know, our ear, our leg, all will bear witness. Even our fingertip will bear witness. What do you do with your finger? Then we know what we have been doing with our finger. We are so addicted, caught into this technology that without fear, every day we use our finger to keep on swiping, pointing a small gadget, our handphone. If you are using your handphone to do something that get closer to Allah, may Allah bless us. Everything that Allah have given us, there is a two side of the coin. It can be good, it can be bad. We are the one who have to decide. And also we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us an active believer, not just a believer, a productive person who care for one another, feel for one another, and who are ready to serve one another for the sake of Allah. To all the brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah. Now, if you go back to the book on a family, yeah, about a family, you will find out why and how beautiful this religion is to guide us from the day we were born. Our Prophet وسلم, remind us. But before then, I would like to, to recall back what we have learned last week. That even our Prophet وسلم, command his immediate family. He have done that. And he command the immediate family, his own daughter, Fatima. By saying, Ya Fatima, shave his head and give charity equal to the, his hair weight in silver. Meaning when a bar, newborn child is born, it's our duty to do something which Allah and the Prophet want us to do. Now about the call of Azan and the Qama for the newborn baby that is very commonly practiced. And when we look into all the hadiths, then we may have some issues because there's not a hadith that's not authentic. That's why there are people who do not recommend. Even it's been done very commonly, been practiced, but people who are very careful about following the hadith of the Prophet choose not to do. Because anything when there's a gray area, we were taught Dakma Yaribuka Ilamala Yaribuk. Just stay away from anything that is gray to some area that is very clear that the authentic hadith is there. Yeah? Then but the one that the Prophet recommends highly is to do halak. Shaving the baby's head, and after the hair is being shifted, then you weigh the hair, and you value the value of the hair with silver. If you don't have any extra to give, silver is very cheap. But if you have something extra that you like to give more, sadaqah is up to you. Then that's where. They say you can even weigh the hair with the value of the gold. <coughs> Salman bin Amir bin Dabbi reported that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Ma'al Ghulami Aqika. A Aqika is prescribed for every child, male or female. Yeah? As long as they are born alive, Akika is 
commanded by our Prophet. So shed blood on its behalf and remove the fill of its head. That means when they are born, the baby is born. We know because they just came out from the mother's womb. They got blood and so on. Yeah. So the Prophet ﷺ remind us, yeah. So shed blood on its behalf and remove the filth of it. Commenting on this hadith from our Prophet, Al Alama Rahimallahu Alayhi, Shaykh Muhammad Nasr al Albani said, Ibn Sirin said that remove the harm of its refer to shaving the head. He indicated that this was his own understanding, not having an authentic report. In this regard, also Abu Daud narrated in the Hadith of Abu Daud, Hadith number 2840, with an authentic isnad, first from Ibn Sirin, but he don't have any reference with him, so he make it clear that it's just his opinion. This is how committed and sincere the scholars before, if they don't have hadith, they said, my opinion. But when you come across an authentic hadith, then it is the duty of all good Muslims to follow the Prophet's saying, then to just hold on to opinion. But when there is no reference at all, it's up to us now to follow any opinion we think that is good. Yeah. That is how we move on. And also, Al Hassan Al Basi used to say that remove, removing the filth means shaving the he head. It possibly has another meaning, as mentioned by Abu Jafar Al Tawal. Attahawi, which is to refrain from smearing the newborn head with blood as was done during Jahiliyyah time. Before Islam, there is also other traditions. And that's why we see that among us also we have some other tradition. When Islam comes in, so we make some changes, but the tradition is still very strong. We still have people using coconut, and then they didn't shave their hair, they cut the hair. They go around everybody, carrying the baby. If you are in the mosque, sometimes if you do it in the mosque, 30 jama'ah is there, so the family member will hold the baby and then go around everybody with somebody holding the coconut. Yeah, that is being cut. The water has been thrown out, Alhamdulillah, left some hole and the flesh. Everybody cut something and put it into the coconut. That is very common, being practiced until today. We are not supposed to waste. Coconut is for you to eat the flesh and to drink the water. But not for you to throw hair in the coconut. Okay? Then we do a lot of other things that was not recommended by our Prophet. But our Prophet just show us what to do, yeah? By shaving the hair, and then weigh the hair with, yeah, a weight. And you know hair is very light, yeah? <coughs> then you see, if one gram, two gram, three gram, you value it the gram with the gram of a gold or silver. Yeah? Start with silver for everybody who can afford. But people who want to give more, you are welcome to do anything. Charity for more is welcome. Yeah, don't pray more that is been prescribed. And that is not welcome at all. Charity is welcome. Abdullah bin Amr radiallahu anhu reported also 
that the Prophet Sallallahu commanded us to name a newborn. Name a newborn. Is there a problem that, that people is coming in that they cannot open? Yes. Now they are just coming in from the side now. No, no, it's, they just started to open the <coughs> Hamdullah. Okay, Hamdullah. It's okay. That the Prophet وسلم, remind and command the family of a newborn that on the seventh day, as well as to remove the field of it, then slaughter an animal. That's where Akika comes in. Akika is about slaughtering an animal. Yeah? Shaving the hair is called halak. Hmm? Now, there are also people who are arguing today. We do not know why. Maybe they don't have the right understanding. They are not exposed to the hadith of the Prophet. You know, for the boy, until when they grow up, they can still shave their hair from time to time. Especially when they perform Umrah and Hajj. After that, they were recommended to shave their hair. But only for the male. For the female, you are not allowed to do that. But when coming to the newborn, the obligation of shaving a newborn's head apply to both boys and girls. There is no evidence from the Prophet who restricted the shaving to the boy only. No. Now we are in page 116. Rather, the reasoning given in Salman had this removing, removing filthy hair should hold by both gender. In addition, the Prophet Sallallahu gave a general rule as is reported by the wife of the Prophet, Radullah an Huma Aisha, Innaman an Nisa Shaka Ikurja. Indeed, women are nothing but full sister of men. Yeah. Now, when is the day now? So beautiful, Islam is here to guide us from the day we are born. And keep on guiding us, remind us who should we follow and who we should not follow. What to eat, what to drink, how to dress up yourself, how to have good friend. Allahu Akbar. From the beginning, you know, sometimes we all are good. We are born pure, innocent. But as we grow up, we are exposed to a lot of things. Then it's up to us which one to follow. But so happen our number one enemy, the shaitan, will never leave us in peace. He will work 24-7. He work 24-7. He also participate in all the IT. Don't think that we are the one who come up with our IT and he don't have his IT. He let you do what you want to do. He come in between. He take everything for a right. Simple. You do, I wait. After you finish, come on with your product, I come in. Yeah. You download a lot of good things, I will expose, expose you to the bad thing. So the good, the bad, the ugly, everything is in one small handful. And that's how the Satan penetrates through every household. And all of us now are exposed to it. Yeah. And that's why it's very important, the Prophet said. Yeah. Oh Allah, give us, bless us with knowledge that benefit us. How can you get knowledge that benefit you? It's like give us halal food. How sure that the food that you're consuming is halal? If you are not among the good people, they don't care. 
If you are not careful, you go out from Malaysia, you thought that KFC, other country, is like KFC here. You think McDonald's, other country, is like McDonald's here? No, not necessary. Name is the same. Brand, same. Ingredient, change. Based on that particular country. It's up to the people and the owner of this restaurant and this outlet. You see, why must as long as beef, chicken, mutton, they may not serve pork. But all this animal is not slaughtered Islamically. So we are not just saying about the name of the animal. We want to make sure that the halal animal only become halal when it's slaughtered Islamically. <coughs> Now, how, when should we offer this akika? The Prophet ﷺ fixed a date. It started from the seven days of the birth of the child. That means you cannot do before seven. It's not right to do anything before that seven day. After the seven day, if you delayed for a reason because the baby is not being well you cannot shave his yeah, hair then you can do later on yeah but everything starts on the seventh day there is a significant why when Allah says sabba sabba and the hadith talk about seven seven Samawati seven level of skies and seven level of the earth. That's why in this world we got seven dimension, seven levels. We are living in one of the seven dimension. So it's not surprised to see monsters, dinosaurs and all other animal that is living in another dimension. Yeah. One of the most logical explanation that we can share, remember about the Mor Bermuda Triangle. Can you imagine when people was yeah, moving around us on the sea and the ocean, sheep, even plain, when they enter that zone, Bermuda Triangle, we don't know why people give that name. There's a triangle there, maybe. Suddenly, the whole thing disappeared. You cannot say they were drowned. If they are drowned, they are sure to have some sign. People who die, yeah, after some time, they were, they floated all. If the ship, yeah, having some problem, you can see some trace later on. No trace. Anything you go in, when you, and it's not every time. There are certain time only. There are people who try to go in, nothing happened. But certain time, even the airplane with all the communication cut off and disappeared. Yeah. Only Allah knows. Are they still alive? Wallahu alam. To us, no more. Because we have to declare. The authority have to declare after a certain time, they say, no sign, zero sign, then consider they are dead. So that the living can move on. If not, there will be a lot of problem. Yeah? About inheritance, how to move on now, you know, our husband passed away, disappeared. That's why in Islam, when you are married, they have one kind of ruling if you want to add. In Malaysia, we do that. Other country, wallahu alam, not necessary. They call the ta'liq. Why have the ta'liq? To give us the freedom. And one of the ta'liq that normally been mentioned by the man here in our country after the nikah 
is to read aloud in front of everybody that if I abandon and leave my wife for more than earlier four months, later on they increase six months, yeah, I just disappeared. I don't have provide them the financial help, no news at all. Six months or four months disappeared. If the wife make an official complaint, only if the wife make an official complaint. If the wife don't bother, don't say six years, four, four, four months or six months, six years you disappear, I don't, I don't worry. I don't care. <coughs> but I still stay as a wife. That means you are not a free person. But the tah, tah leg is to make sure that if the husband disappeared, no news at all, neither the family know where it's about, no one knows, then you can make an official report because the tah leg is there, giving you the choice. You complain and proven, they may want you to say maybe, you make an official written report and also send this to the newspaper to give an announcement that I'm looking for my husband. You don't want to say your husband, this man. No news. The court will grant you a divorce. And then you are a free person. You can move on. Yeah? You can move on. <clears throat> that is the reason for us, uh, the date and the time is very important. Yeah? According to the Prophet's teaching, based on the teaching of our Prophet, the Prophet do not want us to practice Khaza. Khaza means you do not shave the baby's head totally, only partially, and leave some part unshaved. It's like today, the new trend. You, know, you go to the barber, they show you so many styles. <coughs> we are Muslim. We carry a Muslim head. You want to shave your hair, cut your hair, make sure you do it properly. Don't go for kaza. I mean, you shave here, you make it very short right, short left. In the middle, you still maintain the long hair. No, don't do that. If you want to cut, you cut the whole yeah, head. If you want to shave, you shave everything. You want to cut number one, now they have number one, number two, number three, number four. When you go to the barber, they ask you. But you must decide. You don't let the barber to decide. When you close your eye, you call them up to them. Uh, suddenly you open your eye, you got shocked. Why do you cut my hand? I thought that, you no, know, it's okay. It's a new trend. Latest model, you know, 2024 style. No, no, we don't need all this kind of stuff. We have our own value. If you want to cut it short, either you do one, number one, number two, number three, number four, or you tell them, don't use machine. I want you to use scissors. Normal cutting. It's your head. It's your hair. You must decide. Don't let them play with your head. <clears throat> this is very important. You remember when you go to the barber, I, said, I don't know about the sister's one, but the brother one. After that, they're going to give you some small massage. You remember? Uh, then they ask you whether you want your head to be cracked or not. They're going to crack your head. <laughs> so they say, oh, do you have a license to do that? <laughs> uh, suddenly they crack and then your head go one way. And they guarantee that they are qualified to do the cracking. Are they... Uh, from the Cairo, 
Yeah, and all these things we don't know. So easy. Somebody try, they try. Everybody allow their head to be cracked by them. So these are things you must be very careful. <coughs> now, brothers and sisters, remember that anything to do with babies, uh, akika and babies shaving of the head apply for male and female. The idea of some people say, no, no, only for the male, it is just the idea. Nothing to do with the command of the Prophet Anything that we want to say that this is only specially for male, you must have a strong, authentic reference. If not, you go back to the general order. For every newborn, there is an akika. Example, baby boy, you slaughtered two goat, two sheep. There is a dalil on that. For a baby girl, only one. So when you start to learn about this from the beginning, yeah, there's a difference between male and female. And that's why you have the fara'id also is different. If somebody passed away among the family members, yeah, parent passed away, father passed away, the mother have right to inherit the property from the husband and the boys and the girls. The boy have one and the girl have half. Every one, the girl have half. To show you some differences between a male and a female. The difference between half here, full there, is because the man have full responsibility. He do not just take care of himself or his immediate family. If he have a family, he must take care of the mother and his other female sibling. But at the end of the day, if the father is no more there, when the sister is going to get married, then the brother become the wali. He take charge. No. So when Allah grant you extra, He do not grant you only extra in number, but plus extra responsibility. For the sister, no. You get half, half is totally yours. <coughs> yeah. It's important to have this understanding. Now, i like to bring back all of us to understand the value of family. We know we have a family. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us if you go back to Surah Tawbah. Yeah? Surah Tawbah and from verse 20 yeah, to you will find Allah's reminder. Allahu Akbar. Allah Rabbul Alamin is talking to us. This is the word of Allah 1,400 years ago. He is telling us, Ya ayuhallazina amanu la tattaqizu aba'akum wa ikhwanakum awliya in istahab al-kufra ala al-iman. وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُمْ مِنْكُمْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ The meaning, O oh, you who believe, take not as supporters your fathers and your brothers. Why is start from father and brother? Because they are the ones who have more authority. Father have more authority then the mother, mother can propose, can discuss. At last, the father got to make the decision. A good family is a family who likes to sit down and discuss. Not using a kind of dictatorship approach, no. Allah command. When you want to decide something, sit down and discuss. You may have your right reason, a good reason, 
the other party also may have some yeah, reason. But if you sit down, then there will be more blessing. Maybe what you say is 100% correct. <coughs> but it's very good to humble yourself to make sure that we do an di open discussion and collectively we make a decision. Yeah? It's very, very important. Yeah? Now Allah is telling us, take not. That means do not. Take your father and your brother as your supporter. We want them to support us. But Allah said, no. If they, your father or your brother, prefer disbelief than to believe. Meaning, if they are non-believer, you can listen what you want to say, but you cannot yeah, depend on them. If their decision is against Allah and the teaching of Islam, because they decide not to believe. They want to do what they want. Then you must be very careful. You can obey them as long as whatever they want you to do is not displeasing God, Allah, the Creator, and the teaching of Prophet Muhammad. And if you allow yourself to just listen to them, even whatever they want to do is an act of a disbeliever. It's not halal, it's haram. Then Allah is telling you, you are the wrongdoer. You cannot blame them. They, of course, have something uh, to be blamed because of they are your parent, your big brother. But Allah said at the end of the day, you are my servant. And I command you not to obey them if they disobey Allah. So you use your wisdom. <laughs> they can say, you have the knowledge against Islam, you don't have to do. And if they ask you, why don't you follow? It's against Allah's command, Daddy. <laughs> it's against the teaching of our Prophet, brother, if they want an explanation. If not, you just have to save your own soul. First. <laughs> yeah? That is your freedom. You know, everybody have their freedom of choice. And you think that it's not against them, you can make a judgment, no problem. Yeah. Then Allah continue talking about family, because we are talking of father is a family, brother is a family. Then Allah continue say, that means everyone must remember when Allah is a cool. And the Prophet will command his opinion or his Ummah companion. And the Ummah, everybody must start to remember. Kul said to yourself. Said about what? Kul in kana aba ukum. Wa abna ukum. Wa ikhwanukum. Wa azwajukum wa shiratukum. Wa amwalu naktaraftumuha. وَتِجَارَةً تَقْشَوْنَا كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنُ تَرْدَوْنَهَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولُ وَجِحَادٍ فِي سَابِلِهِ فَتَرَبَّسُوا فَتَرَبَّسُوا حَتَّى يَعْتِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْرِهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الْفَاسِقِينَ الله أكبر This is his verse 24 <coughs> Allah Rabbul Alameen is telling us, He, the Creator, is reminding every one of us who have a family. We all have family, Alhamdulillah. 
say, you must remind yourself, if your father, number one, your sons, number two, your brothers, number three, your spouses, number four, your kindred, your family, your relative, uncle, auntie, cousin, and so on. Number what now? Number five, the wealth that you have gained, the wealth that you have compiled, you have gathered, you have working, been working for so long, you do have some saving. So you keep on compiling your wealth. The commerce in which you fear a decline, meaning the business that you have. You open a business, the business is growing, yeah. Alhamdulillah. And the dwelling in which you delight and your home. We have our own house. We have our own room. We have our own condo. Sometimes we don't like to stay with anybody. We have to stay by ourselves. We have the mean. And it's under your name. It's all your property. Of course, when you have your own home, you like to decorate your home according to your liking. That's why there are a lot of renovations sometimes. Houses just built, but when you were to come in, you want to have your own yeah, color, yeah, own decorations. You, you start to... Normally, when you go into a new house, you don't bring a lot of things, except maybe a few luggages. In the beginning, then when you stay there longer, new thing coming in. You buy a cupboard, table, chairs, carpet, one by one coming in. Yeah. The longer you stay, because this is your property, you will see more thing is coming in. Because you need to buy this, to buy that, to buy a fridge, a freezer, everything for your convenience. Yeah? No problem. So you love all this. Now the Allah is said, if all the things that He have mentioned, your father, number one, your son, your brother, your spouses, your family, the kindreds, and your property, number six, your business, number seven, your dwelling, your home, number eight. <coughs> if you love all these eight things more than Allah, can you love them? Yes. Can you make them happy? Can you please them? Yes. But not to the level to displease others. No. Not to the level to displease Allah and the Prophet. Based on this ayah, if you are pleasing them to displease Allah and to go against the teaching of the Prophet wasallam, and you are not ready to sacrifice your life, everything, your family is a gift from Allah. Allah is the one who gave it to us. Without the permission of Allah, you cannot have children. It's Allah's will now you have children. It's Allah's will that you have property. He is the provider, a razak. Now He gave you everything. Now you thought that this thing is yours. Maybe this property given by your parent, but your parents get this from Allah. He is the provider. So are you going to love them to displease Allah? To go against Allah? That whatever they want you to do, even against Allah, I don't care, I follow. You can't do that. If you do that, you are not helping yourself, you are not helping them. And what did Allah say? Allah said, whoever loves all the eight things that is mentioned more than Allah and His Messenger, and striving hard, fi sabidillah, then with 
Fatarabbasu. Allah is saying, wait. Wait for what? Fatarabbasu hatta ya'ti Allah bi amri. Wait for the punishment of Allah. And Allah guide not the people who are rebellious. Allah consider all of us as rebellious, as fasiqin. Who is our creator, Allah? And now you go against him because of the eight. Who give it to you? Allah. Just an example. The same goes to father, mother, the spouses. If any of the family members call you to be ungrateful, to rebel against your parent, who should you follow? Father, mother, example I'm just going to share with you. Allah Qadar, they have to end their relationship as husband and wife. Who are the ones who are supposed to take care of the mother, of the children? Is the mother. The first right is the mother. But then the mother has no right to corrupt the children. To ignore or to deny the father. It is their father. If we have an ending, we accept it as a qadar and qadar. Don't corrupt the children. Even they are under your care. And of course, the father is the father. He can come anytime to see the children. It's your children. Now, when the mother remarried, then all the children will be taken care by the father. The father has more authority than the mother because you have men who say, I love you. I want to take you as my wife, but not your children. This is not my children. My feeling towards the stepchildren is not the same. You know, I want my own privacy. I want my freedom. He thought that is a plus plus responsibility. Example. That's why a woman, most of the women, if you look in the history, yeah, back before until now, women normally will stay alone, taking, uh, taking care of their children. Yeah, why? Because the danger is, if you decide to remarry, you're right, but you must make sure that the man that you choose is a man that loves you and your children. Then, alhamdulillah, you will stay happily. Now, this is very important. If the children are under the care of the father, the father has no right to corrupt the children's mind. Your mother is useless. Your mother doesn't love all of you. How can he say that? He has no right. Or your father doesn't love you. You cannot even say that to children. Let When the children is with the father, the father gives the best to the children. If the children ask, why papa left mama? You know, your mama is a good woman. She loves all of you. But it's Allah's qadar that our life ends here. But you must love your mom. Yeah. That's all. You don't talk negative bad about your spouses because you are corrupting the mind of the children. The children sometimes very good in playing politics. Uh, when they don't like the mom, then they start to say, why I don't like you? See, that's why he said, Papa also don't like you. <laughs> and then it's very, very hurting. You cannot say that. The sacrifice given by the mother, 
must be honoured, the sacrifice by the father must be honoured. Only we adults <coughs> may have our own issues, so we solve the issue as an adult peacefully, and then we move on. That is how we carry on with our life. Children is amana from Allah, is our duty to protect them, give them the best. So even you are not together, maybe Allah ordained that you can be a good friend, but not as a good spouse. Life move on. Why must you create hatred? What do you gain? You have been together for years. Your children, do you want the children to take side? No, it's not good. It's the duty of the children to respect, love, honor both party, father and mother. That's how we move forward. We want all the good things yeah, for the children to remember, not anything bad. But we children can play a very important role in the family. You know, we can strengthen the tie between father and mother. We can work together, Islah, they said. We can be the peacemaker sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes you will see some children very, very wise. Very, very wise. They know how to play their part. They go to this side, they go, and then they islah. They help both parties to have good feeling and good thoughts. Alhamdulillah, and move on. You know? Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. So may Allah will alamin help all of us who love a family to take care of the family. And you can love everybody, but love them with the guidance of Allah. Not love them following your desire. Oh, I love you, that Papa. Why? Because anything I want, Papa, give me. Mama, kedekut. Every time I ask, Mama, don't give me a he scream at me, you know. Whom neck more at home normally? Mama. Why? Because Mama is looking, is looking at all of you day in, day out. Papa hardly know you. Papa just come home after work, you know. So it's very different, yeah. So it's very important for all of us to understand the family values. If everyone work together as a family and always yeah, try our best to bring all the family back to Allah, to follow Allah's commandment and the teaching of the Prophet, you'll find peace. You all will be happy because happiness and peace belong to Allah. And when you do everything guided by the Creator, you will never fail yourself. So one of the important things, you must have sincerity in solving a problem in the family, and you must have patience. Yeah, because sometimes you see this thing is not right. At this point of time, it's not right. But it's not against Islam, you just follow, support. At the end, you say, MashaAllah, we have made the right decision. Sometimes it's like investment. You know, is this the right time to invest? No lah. Time is bad. Investors like to go in when time is bad. <laughs> because things will drop. Uh, when time is good, Everything will raise up. We say, if this is bad time, that is the right time to do investment if you have extra. And you must be sure that this investment is fundamentals, is strong. Only because of the market today is different. Yeah. I don't know why the world financial crisis yeah, really depend on one country. Eh? Because we are stuck with that currency sometimes. We value everything from one country, up and down. You know? Especially today, they say, now, before election, down, 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 down. Uh, 
after election, thing is going up, up, up. Yeah. So when is the right time to invest? Anybody who are an investor here? <laughs> they say, this is the right time to go, go, go. Just example, you don't want to invest a lot, you invest 10% of what you have. Example, maybe at that time you find thing is down, but suddenly after that, what you invest gives you a very good profit. How do you feel? <laughs> How do you feel? Happy? Alhamdulillah. Then you can, have, you can plan your holiday now. Because you have extra to spend. Sometimes life is not something that you can say that I know best. I know everything. No. You try your best. But everything you want to do, make sure that you humble yourself. Do it collectively. Discuss. Have to open discussion. And then ask those who are specialized in that area and whatever you Thing that is good is not against Islam, guided by the Islamic principle and the teaching of the Prophet, then just do and have patience. And once you do it collectively, something fail. Don't pinpoint at anybody. And they are your fault. Lah. No. Now, you see, the loss is because of you. No, no finger pointing anymore. Because it is done collectively. Yeah, normally when good time, nobody say, oh, because of you, or oh, because of me. <laughs> Bad time, you lah. You know? And that is what the problem we are facing today. Anything good come from children? My child, my child, my baby. Anything bad? Ah, that is the father one. So, bad go to the male, good go to the female. It is not fair. It's our father, our mother. So, we work together as one team. It will be more blessing when your children grown up, you want to do something as a family, have an open discussion. Because your children may also have some extra knowledge. We are not investor, we are a carpenter and our mother is a chef yeah, example, a good chef Alhamdulillah it's okay but children have interest different interests, they are investor they are in business so anything to do with business, father, mother call upon the whole family and seek some advice from the son or from the daughter who have some extra knowledge and they are good in that. The only thing the father and mother can say, son, daughter, please go and check up. Make sure, get more information. You can do that. If the son or daughter came back and they are good children, they are not bad children. If they are bad children, be careful. They say, this is a good investment, investment. Only investment for them, they want to take your money. Then you must be careful. You must make sure the children do their homework and then you call them to present it to you and you'll find that uh, they have done a good thing and you can trust the children. Okay. Show me where to invest. If you don't want to pass the money to the children, show me where. And the children, there's nothing to hide if they are sincere. You know, they are not doing this for their own yeah, self, they're doing for the family. Then collectively you do think the blessing will be good. Because Allah said so. When you do things as a group collectively, there are rahmah. There's a lot of blessing and mercy. So let us always plan to do things together. Yeah, Don't be too Overconfident, my way, my way. Let us talk about our ways. Which letter is more blessed? My or our? 
ours. Alhamdulillah. I and we, which one is better? We. That's how we move on, yeah, brothers and sisters. So may Allah Rabbul Alameen make us understand the blessing of a family. Yeah? And make us have good children who are grateful and thankful to Allah Rabbul Alameen so that Allah will bless them with righteous family too. They are going to have their own family sooner or later. After we have done our part, we pray for the best, guided by Allah's guidance, the Creator, and the teaching of the best man on earth, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. we all will not fail anybody. Even you have some trial and challenges, just have patience. Then you see, a good thing is going to happen. Because Allah said so. You come back to me, you follow my messenger, I will love you. When Allah loves you, Allah will put the love into everybody's heart, then you have a loving family. You know? How nice to have a loving family. You know? Then you have peace. Then you know how to move on very positively. But challenges is there. Don't let any outsider come and corrupt you and destroy you and the family. Don't allow that to happen. Because they are nobody. They are just a stranger. They don't care. Family is different. We feel for one another. Friend, friend is friend. When they need you, my friend. When they don't need you, that's not my friend. <laughs> that is friend. Friend is like that. Family, the minute you're not well, the whole family feel. Oh, what happened to him? Where is he now? How can I help? Can we take time to take care of the sick one? That is family. Friend is friend. Just remember, friend is friend, not a family. Family is family. The one who loves Allah and the Prophet, that's the best family because they will guide you accordingly. Yeah? Inshallah. If there's any question, we well, are open for Q&A. Fadda. And then prohibited walking with one shoe. Is that okay? Which one? I'm, I'm reading it. On, on the screen, Oh, when later on, one page 117? Sorry, I said page 116. Asra, you put two pages together. Okay, okay. Shall I keep this for next week? Yeah, for okay. next week. Right. <laughs> yeah. Remember, when we are talking about page 116, you just highlight 116. Okay. And people get confused. They ask me something that I did not touch. Eh? Yeah. We keep that until next week, inshallah. Any other question? Naam. Any question from the sisters? Yeah, Fadali. Pass the mic, yeah. Assalamualaikum Ustaz Waalaikumsalam Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh uh, I was read somewhere Whereby uh, One Ustaz say uh, If we recite Rabbi Habli Minas Salihin To our kids Let's say our kids Is not very good And one day they will be back To to um, on track Again, again, again Okay, satu Ustaz ni dia ada cakap <laughs> Kalau anak kita ni mungkin tak baik uh, In order menjadikan anak kita baik Every day kita kena recite Rabbi Habli Minas Salihin Rabbi Habli Minas Salihin Every day in order, to, uh, okay. in order to make sure that our daughter or our son Go back to in the right track Is correct. it correct? 
No, of course, the Prophet ﷺ like all the parents to pray for the best. Pray that Allah will grant us with righteous offspring. Qurratu a'ayun. Then we look at them, the coolness of the eyes, they are so happy. Because they are righteous people, righteous offspring. <clears throat> that is our hope and our prayer. No parent want to, Ya Allah, make our ch my children a gangster, no. Yeah. Make my children a mafia. <laughs> no way. I want them to be righteous, to be good, you know. Of course, that is our yeah, prayer. But then, if we just pray, we ourselves don't set good example. It's very hard. They may become righteous, yeah, with Allah's blessing, yeah. But normally, that's why the Prophet said, "Kulli maulud yulat ala fitra fa abawa hu yahawi danihi." Are you nasironihi? Are you majisanihi? So true and practical. Every child is born pure, innocent, very clean. Who is the one who start to corrupt them? Not their friend. You have no friend yet. You only have their papa and mama, and the brother and the sister at home. If there are brother and sister, so the prophet said, "Fa abawahu." When the Prophet said for Abba, wow, who means started by the father. The father, then only the mother will corrupt the baby. The child, that sometimes they are born as Muslim, their behavior is like the Yahud. Arrogant. The Yahud are very arrogant. Yeah, so proud, arrogant, not humble. Because the father show some bad character, become arrogant. That he is always the right. Whatever come from him, right. Everybody wrong. And if the father is not a praying father, he like to gamble, he like to smoke. What do you think the children is going to be? The children is being exposed to all these bad things. The children may start to pick up all this bad character. Sometimes the father is good. Now come to the mother. Mother keep on screaming, shouting every day. Without explaining to the children. Son, daughter, talk, not screaming, shouting, school. Talk, engage, make them understand. Guide them. Set good example. Then you pray, Oh Allah, protect my children, make my children righteous. It's good. But you want children to be good, you ourselves set bad example. If Allah bless them, it's really an extra blessing. Yeah. But nothing comes from us. Because you cannot say, I want the best, but you show the worst to the children. We set good example. <laughs> that will be best. You want your children to be righteous, solihin? We stay righteous. Then you see, it's easy for your children to be righteous. That's how we move together. That's why Islam always starts from who? Yourself. Ya yuhalazina amnu ku anfusakum wa ahlikum na. Then you can save other. That's how we work together. Good, the prayer is correct. But if we want the prayer to be effective, we set good example. We want to be a righteous mother, a righteous father, then righteous children, righteous family. Okay? Yeah, but some people pray, pray, pray. No response. The children go different direction. Why? Huh? Allah don't accept my prayer. Because you are not setting good example. You are not showing good things. Children is looking at you. And they are following you. You are the cause. So when the children's upbringing is good, environment at home is good, 
you know. Then we hope that when he want to mix around, you remember when we want to send our children to school, we choose the school. We don't just send to any school. We want to know this school, a good school, got good result, the student are bright, very intelligent. We love to send the children. We want them to be in a good environment. We give them the good food, halal food. We must keep on guiding them, show them that we are righteous. And then when they grow, friend, we also monitor, help them to choose the right friend. They can bring their friend, we want to know who is their friend, and then we talk to them. After we value, when the friend come, the friend pray together, the friend know how, then when they talk, they use all the good word, not all the bad word. Then you can see this friend, a good friend. If the friend don't pray, if the friend just little thing and, and so loud and using bad words, then you know that they are no good children. So you must safeguard your children first. Help them. They need guidance so that they save themselves from further problems. Because we don't know. We are still young. Parents have exposed to a lot of things, they have a lot of experiences, they may help you better. So learn how to be humble to your parents. You cannot stop our children from having friends. Only you hope that they have righteous friends, good friends. Yeah? You are clear? Doa is correct, good, but you must follow up with our good example. Yeah? They say action speak louder than word. Alhamdulillah. Next, any other question? We have a sister who have asked, any other brother like to ask anything? This picture is a very good picture. Yeah. We have extra, I think. Yeah. It's good for all the parents to have one. Why? Because of our children. You know, when they go to any barber today, they have so many trend fashion. You know? We thought fashion is only on garment, now also on the head. So they want you to, they show you all these pictures. When I went to any barber, I saw all these pictures too. Then I keep on reminding the barber, you know, if you're Muslim, you should not. Yeah, you should not come up with this kind of picture. No. Only one, you do it properly. You want to cut, you cut the whole. Yeah. Yeah, the whole head you cut. Cut. Number one, number two, number three. Don't cut kaza. This is called kaza. Kaza is something trendy, but it's not right at all. Be a full human from top to bottom. You don't want to be a half human. On the, on the head now, you look like a zebra. You, know? you, like, you look like an Apache, you know. No, no, you want to be who you are. Today, I'm very sad to see what is happening. You don't know how to choose what is right. Very confused. No? So, inshallah, we hope everybody will have this next time. Remind your children. And sometimes the problem, the father also went and asked for this kind of haircut. I don't know what happened to the head, you know. You do look, do you do look, look good? That was trend. No? Uh, be a proper human, you know. Think like a woman. The, cho the children just follow you. Cannot blame the children if they are dark. Yeah. And sometimes I feel so sad when I was having my hair cut. The father next door talking to the barber, telling the barber to cut the son's hair in the way. Yeah. Like what I've shown you in the Kazakh. Yeah. 
please share this informant thing that is good for the family. Yeah. Any last question from the sisters? Alhamdulillah. Yeah. A lot of brothers is not with us. I think today we're supposed to have another activities at Mishit Vilaya. I was supposed to be there too, but uh, I chose not to be there because yesterday we've been busy yeah, with the fun run, our first fun run, yeah, organized by Al Qadim, Alhamdulillah. So, brother and sister, we have um, received a message that one of our sisters in Islam, Hasna Muhammad Hashim, Hasna Muhammad Hashim, passed away this morning at 12 a.m. Yeah? So, it's part of a duty for all of us to make a short prayer. You all have any last question? No, yeah? Inshallah. We may, I'm going to recite this prayer recommended by our Prophet. Salam, and hope everybody who is here try to follow me to recite this prayer. Yeah, when I explain the meaning, then you can say Amin. But the recitation, follow me to recite. The more people recite, the better for the deceased and for us. Inshallah. Yeah, please follow me. Yeah, we're reciting this prayer especially to our sister Hasna Muhammad Hashim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim Innaka Hamid Majid Allahumma qfil laha Warhamha Wa'afiha Wa'fu anha Wa'akrim Nuzulaha Wa'wasi' Mudqalaha واغسلها بالماء والثلج والبرد ونقيها من القطايا كما ينقى الثوب الأبيض من الدنس اللهم تلها خيرا من دارها وأحلا خيرا من أحلها وزوجا خيرا من زوجها اللهم أدقلها جنتك وأجرها من أزاب القبر وأزاب النار اللهم اقفل لهينا وميتنا وشاهدنا وغائبنا وصغيرنا وقبيرنا وزقرنا وأنثانا اللهم من أحييته منا فأحييه على الإسلام ومن توفيته منا فتوفه على الإيمان اللهم لا تحرمنا أجرهم ولا تدلنا بعدهم يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم و الله with the mercy and your blessing we seek your forgiveness upon our sister Hasna Muhammad Hashim forgive all her sin 
whether it's minor or major. Show mercy on her, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Give her a good place to return to you, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Widen the grave that she is going in, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Cleanse her sin like how you cleanse a white cloth from all the filth and the dust and the dirtiness, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. O oh Allah, like how you have given her a peaceful life when she was young. Make her have a happy life after this, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Replace for her a better environment, a better family and friend than what she has in this life. O oh Allah, forgive all her sin, pardon her, shower your mercy upon her, and O oh Allah, protect her from the torment of the grave and torment of hell fire, and enter her to your paradise among your righteous servant, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. O oh Allah, forgive the sin of all of us who are still alive and who are present here and forgive the sin of all of loved ones who have passed and returned back to you before us. O oh Allah, forgive the sin of the people who are not with us today because of their busyness. O oh Allah, forgive the sin of the young and old among us, the male and the female among us. If you will make our life in this world longer, bless our life, guide us so that we have a good life here and give us a good ending. Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. O oh Allah, don't abandon all the good things that Hasna, Muhammad, Hashim and all our parents who die as a believer all the good advice, the good thing that they have taught us to be forgotten by us. Reward them for all the good thing that they have left behind. And don't make any of the family member turn astray after our loved one is no more with us. Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil aqirati hasana wa qina azabanna. Oh Allah, bless us with happiness, success in this life, happiness and success in the next life and save all of us from the trial of this world and the fitna in the day of judgment. Amin. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in and alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Amin. Ya rabbil alamin. Subhanakallahumma وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك. The meaning, glory be to you, O Allah. All praises belong to you. We bear witness none have the worthy to be worshipped except you alone. And to you we seek forgiveness. Forgive us, O Allah. And to you we repent, accept our repentance, O Allah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.